There is a misconception that minimalists hate having things. Well, we can't speak for anyone else, but we love having our things. In this series, we visit collections of our favorite stuff, along with a bit of history or thought processes behind our ownership of these items. Today, we look at some of our favorite kitchen essentials. The question posed was, if we were starting from scratch and we could only bring along with us 10 items from our existing kitchen, what would those items be? In our opinion, the most important piece of equipment in the kitchen for a pleasant cooking experience is a good chef's knife. For a long time, we used cheap, often undersized knives that just weren't very good. They didn't feel good in the hands, they are not very sharp, and even if we do sharpen them, they don't stay sharp for very long. And since we cook so frequently, we decided to invest in a decent knife, and we managed to find this knife for a very good price at the time. This 8-inch chef's knife was actually Glow's purchase back when he still did a bit of cooking. Fun fact, Glow is, or was, the more skilled cook between the two of us. Although these days, his main job in the kitchen is just to keep the knife sharp. Glow talks about this knife being full tang, German steel, and some things else. But to be honest, I don't know too much about knives. All I know is that I'm more than satisfied with his choice, and after using this knife for a couple of years, I think it's money well spent. I don't think there will be a need to replace this knife anytime soon, but I can already imagine that when it's time to look for a replacement, Glow will be very excited to shop for something even more beautiful and of higher quality. To supplement our chef's knife, we also have a smaller, more maneuverable paring knife. It's simple, inexpensive, and gets the job done. Just like with the chef's knife, we make sure to sharpen it regularly, and we believe that it would serve us well for many more years. Next, we have our cutting boards. We used to use plastic cutting boards that usually didn't last very long. So, to go along with our knives, we decided that it was time to upgrade to a couple of wooden cutting boards. This large one is made of solid beech wood and has ample space for me to do most of the cutting that I need. The smaller one is made of mango wood and I mainly use it for fruits and vegetables. They are both quite inexpensive for what they provide. Wooden cutting boards are more durable than plastic ones and also gentler on knives compared to bamboo ones and they just look so much more handsome in the kitchen. Although they require more maintenance compared to plastic boards, with some care and regular oiling, we foresee ourselves using these boards for quite some time. We have three frying pans in our house, but the interesting thing is that we didn't actually purchase the majority of these pans. We don't know if it's an Asian parents thing, but our parents love to stock up on cooking utensils when they go on sale, even if they have absolutely no need for them. These two pans had probably been sitting in our parents' treasure trove for a couple of years collecting dust before the ownership was transferred to us. But we got to admit that they have been serving us quite well and we hate seeing things go to waste anyway. For a beginner cook like myself, the non-stick pans have been key to ensuring that the meals I make are actually edible. But non-stick pans don't last forever, and after using them for a few years, there are now scratches on the pan that affect its performance, and perhaps even its safety. On the other hand, we have had this stainless steel pan longer than we have had these non-stick ones, and it's still going strong. And most likely, it'll keep going for some time. So if I had to pick just one, I would probably pick the stainless steel pan because it's simply a longer lasting product, even if it's not as easy to use. But that should be less of a problem as long as I keep working on my cooking skill. Once some of these pans reach the end of their lifespan though, I'm interested in giving carbon steel pans a shot. For more saucy or soupy foods, 
I rely on my trusty stainless steel saucepan. We have had this for a few years now and it still works as well as it did on its first day. It's good quality, lasts a long time and the handle doesn't get too hot to um handle. Although we can definitely make do with using just a single general purpose spatula for most types of cooking, for our list, we chose to make our lives easier and include all three of our cooking utensils that do well at each of their respective jobs. I use this bamboo spoon the most. It doesn't scratch the surface of our frying pans and I use it for most foods with the exception of something like noodles. For noodles, I use these tongs. We got these because we cook pasta quite frequently and we realized that having tongs just make noodle dishes so much easier to handle. It's also much easier to flip certain types of foods with them, so definitely worth having these in the kitchen. Lastly, I have this flat spatula for things like pancakes, which we make all the time, and for cooking fish for example. Last but not least, we need some tableware to serve up our home-cooked meals. I'd like to highlight these plates, which are my favourites. I have this fascination with ceramic tableware. I think that they are beautiful and full of character. If there's anything that I would collect and hoard, it would most likely be nice ceramic plates and bowls. When we moved into our place, I had plans to slowly add tableware to my collection from the countries that I visit. I got these a few years ago when we were in Thailand. Unfortunately, since then, my plans have been disrupted, but when travelling becomes a thing again, I would love to continue on my quest to add more pieces to my collection. A quick word for the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community. Over the months, we have sat through classes on illustration, self-improvement, and even cooking. Last month, I wanted to learn to take better photographs of food because we were going to share some simple recipes on our email newsletters. So for that, I took a quick class on food photography by Sean Dalton. He gave many helpful tips on styling, composition and editing, and hopefully I did them justice. Skillshare costs less than $10 a month. Be the first 1000 to click on the link in our description and get a free trial of their premium membership. So these are the 10 kitchen essentials that we wouldn't want to live without. What are your favourite items in the kitchen? Also, what collection of things would you like to see in future Minimalist Things episodes? Let us know in the comments. See you in the next video.